Hi guys, my name is Borodante, and welcome back to Overpain. On a quite a sad day, I'm recording this the day the news broke about the full-scale war starting on Ukraine. Surely wasn't fun news. Nadia and I still have all of our family in there, so we just keep being updated on their situation, but we can't do much. So far, everything's fine, but I mean, you know, it's only the beginning. When things start settling in, who knows how everything will happen in there, so... But yeah, both of us are totally fine, and thank you guys so much for all your words of support. Uh, my latest video is just exploding with comments, all of you guys wishing us well and pointing out that we left just on time. I mean, I'm not disagreeing with that. I guess so far we can only see and hope that whatever happens next is not gonna be moving forward or something, I don't know. One thing I know for sure is that I have to keep working, so let's do that. Oh, and some of you guys pointed out that my intro now looks kind of, I don't know, not aging well or whatever with the whole situation. No, I'm not gonna let the stupid war ruin my thing that signifies my obsession with computer graphics. So, that stays, and it's as good as ever. So, there's that. <laughs> That's one thing I can be firm about in my situation. So, this is Overpain, which means I go through my Patreon page and check out all the submissions that you guys sent to me during January, previous month, and see if I can give you some advice and maybe fix something. First patient is Lena. Hi, Lena. Hi, Boro. I found your channel last year and really enjoyed watching your videos. I could take something away from each of them. The picture I have for you is this dragon lady. I worked on and off on this during the last year and I am happy with the progress I made, but I am a bit stuck and could use some help. I struggled a lot with the lighting and shadows and I think it's still not working that well. I think I chose a too complicated lighting situation and I had a hard time finding good references. Also, the head feels a bit off, but I couldn't figure out the problem. Yeah, I think the main problem with the head is that it just feels uncomfortably turned. Like, a, a bit too much. People usually rest on their actual side, and this is like there's an underlying reason to take specifically this angle, you know? In the original picture she's naked, but I wasn't sure what the rules are about that. Good call, because I wouldn't be able to show that on YouTube. So I gave her some underwear. The original picture can be found here. I'm good, let's just work with what we have. Let's start with the composition, I think I generally like it, there's no, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. One thing I would fix is probably, you know, you tend to push certain details right at the very edge of the picture. Even though generally there's nothing wrong with, you know, lava being there at the bottom of the composition, but it shouldn't feel like it's, you know, a bit of the frame that literally follows the edge of the canvas. Also, this hole really feels two-dimensional as well, almost like it's a hole in the canvas. So we need to make them a bit more three-dimensional, you know, since this is a floor, let's think of it more as, you know, a three-dimensional plane, and the hole will be kind of like a round shape on the floor, so it will have this kind of curvature. So it won't be like parallel to the edge of the canvas anywhere at any point, it will have its own thing going on, its own story. So I'll adjust it this way, probably something like that. And with the hole as well, we should, you know, think a bit more about it as a thing that's really going on. Let's think there's probably a vertical uh, piece of rock going on. I think I want to cut out the character first, so I would be able to more freely manipulate all these things. That's better. So now I can just do this. So, you know, this is just not uh, some kind of flat wall over there. That's again, sort of like this is the plane of the canvas and the plane of the wall is exactly the same, like parallel, also flat. It has its own thing going on. It probably goes into the depth over there, you know, since it reached some kind of hole, that means it was increasing the distance before it reached the hole. So it makes sense to sort of um, 
tilt this plane a little bit that way, like it's going away towards the hole. So that's uh, like one way to make it go. It's not necessary, but definitely brings in some kind of three-dimensional aspect to this location instead of just going flat with the canvas. Like I can see generally the picture is the a picture of the character and the background is probably an afterthought. That's why this happened, but you know, it's obvious you need to work with that. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a useful way to think about it. And yeah, I'll put some kind of piece of stone in there like that. So I'm implying some kind of more complex, actual three-dimensional shapes in there, maybe something like that going on. And one thing I would start with is I would make the whole place much, much brighter over there. Although generally I gotta say it feels a bit weird that we have such a convenient hole in there, but that's a separate subject, you know? Convenience is a good friend of paintings in general. It's, it's a good idea to have things conveniently placed, otherwise why are you painting this? So yeah, something like that. You see these top planes of randomly positioned uh, bits of rock are catching the light from the top, looking all right. But yeah, overall, uh, this is my, you know, generic fix about the dynamic range. So if we're inside of this cave where it's really dark and it's daytime, it's specifically looking like daytime in there. At least I hope that's what it is. It's probably, it looks like it's sunshine going through the trees. But it kind of could be moonlight though, but I don't know. In any case, you know, um, if we can see stuff inside of the cave, our eyes probably adjust it to a very dark environment. That means that whatever's going on outside will look a lot brighter to us. So that's kind of important. Because this way it's like, is this some kind of a, you know, glowing goop stuck on the wall? Just because it's like, in certain parts it gets as dark as certain details inside of the cave, like. It means it's just something inside of the cave as well. And that's the thing with, uh, you know, realistic dynamic range. If, if something's on the surface so far away and such, you know, being the light source that's lighting up this character pretty strongly in here, it should be so much brighter over there because there's obviously a distance and, you know, the hole is small, there's a lot of obstructions and this light being so bright when it reached way all the way over here, that means the source should be like really bright. So we shouldn't go any darker than like this color and that's it. So it would be definitely brighter than everything else in here that's lit by this color. But yeah, that's like my favorite subject lately. Uh, I'm not gonna go into it even more. You can watch previous video uh, of my overpain where I was talking a, a lot about it. Now, before I try and ruin the face, trying to fix the angle of the head, uh, let's talk about the lighting from uh, that's actually reaching the character from over there. Because generally the light from the lava, it's all right. Like I would maybe, um, even now to the lighting a little bit, like all of this area is still facing the lava in a way, you know? It's, there sure is some change in angles, but there shouldn't be like literal shadow around the mouth. So that's a thing to keep in mind, you know? There's overall value of this being turned to the lava. And then we can think about, you know, if certain parts are turned more towards it or less. Still all lava. But yeah, about the light from the hole, I think, judging by the god rays in here, that hole is kind of like, is just ending there. There is nothing more going on, because if there would be a much bigger opening, like the whole ceiling is actually open, you know? Then these god rays wouldn't be so clean just going from that one point. This signifies that it's like a very narrow little hole that's letting in some of that light. Which means we can't really see the this color on the front of, of the head, like on the face. This should be dark. It's like this situation in here, you see there's... Uh, if there's no lava light, there's just darkness. And it makes sense because 
it's not facing over there. That's only the rim lighting. So we should make sure if there's no skylight, there's a good chance it will be just black. That's the thing when you work with, uh, you know, complex lighting, sometimes you, you just fill up certain areas with the default color of the surface. Just, you know, she's green, so in here it's just green because not lava. But in reality, if, if not lava, there is nothing else. Like the skylight is from the back, so it should just go dark. Not quite sure where this wing actually ends in here. I will probably, you know, like curve it like this away a little bit. So it's sort of laying somehow downwards. Still, it, it would require a bit more thought in there, of course. I'm not sure what this is from. Is this a part of the arm or... In any case, it looks like a cylindrical spike, so it should be shaded this way. Now, we have lava on this side and the hole on that side. That means we get this nice terminator situation here. A lighting sandwich. I really feel like I just use like 12 key words on, on these overpaying videos. Everything comes down to rim lighting, dynamic range, light sandwich, you know, the, the stuff is always... Uh, repeating itself, but I feel like that's exactly why the answer to the most of your guys' problems are right there. It's clear and simple. Just believe in it, in a way, you know? I know how it's sort of anxiety-inducing to just paint stuff with black, but it really is, a lot of the times, uh, a good thing to do, especially if you're in the nighttime or in a cave where there's not a lot of ambient light at all. So yeah, let's see how this works out. It's really hard to just paint over a face, but I really do believe that this stuff should go into very dark color. And just natural light, uh, natural color of the skin can't really show up in here because we only have very warm lava color hitting the surface. So yeah, something like this is shaping up. You see, I'm trying to fade out and soften some of the values here because originally there was just orange spots very like sharply at the bottom half and then there's literally nothing in here at all. But if you like think about it, you know, this could light up pretty much the whole face. It's just from afar. So it's like a big soft light. That means the gradient is not sharp. It's soft, so all the sliding, it keeps propagating a little bit further ahead. It just gets darker and darker. A little bit like this, but generally, yeah, the nose will be the darkest color and the forehead as well. Opposite to the normal situation where the light is usually from the top, the nose and the forehead are the brightest usually. Also, these parts as well. Also, maybe I'll make the inverse shading on the eyes for this stuff. It may look pretty cool. Yeah, there's a lot of this soft reflection on the eyes as well. Maybe you are fighting the too flat and sharp shading on the eyes in general. But again, we're in a cave. There's not a lot of this ambient stuff to reflect. So things legit go dark. And one thing I would add is just a highlight like this of sorts from the bottom. There you go, look at that. Looking pretty cool. And yeah, I have a little bit of the green stuff showing through everywhere, like in the edges between stuff. That's because I was just painting over. But actually, it kind of works like under painting effect. I'm guessing like this right here a little bit. This is by Ruan Ja. His sketch was painted with bright orange, and then he was adding these dark colors on top, but that orange stuff is showing through everywhere, adding these bright colors, and it's giving a very cool, interesting, different context to the whole picture. But that's generally a separate subject. So yeah, overall, over here, I would go with the same formula, so most of the stuff goes dark, and sometimes when we start facing something that could see the lava, you know, that, that kind of angle, that's where we bring it back. But mostly, 
it's all going into that blackness. And uh, this top plane, I'm leaving a little bit of that rim lighting, but it's not gonna be strong at all. Maybe a little bit over here, but in here we're kind of dropping it because the wing is covering it up a lot. And of course the wing should get darker as well. But like at first I would make it, you know, dark to make sure we get rid of the skylight. And then on top, I would add that lava light again, since obviously like you even showed it as well, but I would go more with that. Like I think in here, all the details need to be lava. The details are lava. And you keep like blending in the natural color of the surface, like all this green color, but you have to understand the lighting is just orange or red. That means no natural color is gonna show up. It's just not the way things are. If there's just red light from this angle, it's just gonna be all in this color. There's not a lot of different colors will be showing through. In fact, if you really think about it, our, um, uh, who is it? Gargoyle, I don't know, flying orc or whoever that would be. Uh, she would be actually pretty dark in the light of the fire of lava in general, because her color is like opposite to the color of the sliding. A white human would be pretty bright because our skin is warm originally, but if it's cold green, it will get really dark in the orange lighting. But I mean, it's not necessarily a problem. Our eyes can adjust. If it's overall a dark lighting on this character, we'll be able to see it, you know? We've seen probably many, many examples in fantasy games and whatever, where orcs are lit by the torches and whatever, right? And it looks just fine. I'm just saying, if next to an orc, or whoever this is, green, creature, there would be a white human character or, I don't know, a dwarf with white skin. They would be much brighter looking comparing to the green skin character. I don't know, some anatomy stuff. I'm sorry if I'm making her a bit skinnier, like if it's automatically a better look or something. That's not what I meant. It's just that even if uh, there's a certain amount of body fat, when you lay on your side, in here, you know, it sort of like goes away and hangs on this side, but in here you're kind of skinnier, that kind of effect. So in here, I'm trying to introduce, there's like this um, abdominal area, but in here, that's where the thigh happens, and the, this is the bone in here. It's introducing this after this curvature away, it goes back forward, and we're catching some light in here. And this is a very fancy detail that's really nice looking. So yeah, I don't think I'm necessarily making her looking skinnier. Just some details, you know, uh, she's spreading one of her hands like this, that means we will probably see uh, some ribcage edges. And actually this one should be a bit more like open over there, but we can't really see it. So, I mean like this one's here, but that one will be a bit more open, kinda, not, not that much, but because this arm is going up. And yeah, at first I introduced very sharp, like strong values, but of course I'm toning it down. Same thing as I did with the face, where the values were curving away too strongly. The lighting is generally softer, so. So yeah, overall, um, that's what I have to say. Didn't really touch the face part, but really, uh, I think I would just waste everyone's time trying to repaint the face at a different angle. The main idea is, I think, is that it's just turned too much. When someone's laying down, they don't go like this. They, they keep the neck almost straight. That's the thing. And in here it's like bent too much. That's uh, the only a bit awkward, a bit unnatural thing about it. Because she seems to laying down relaxed and playful. So uh, her neck feels a bit stiff for this kind of message, you know? That's the reason. So yeah, I guess uh, this is it. The these are the changes. The face looks very different. I wonder why. I think I changed the shape of the nose a lot. Well, something like this. Second patient is Sayned. Hi, Sayned. Hey, Boro. 
I have been watching your channel for quite a few years now. Absolutely love the Overpain series. I just finished this painting for an indie game titled Breach Wanderers, in case you are interested. Oh, it's like a card game. Never tried those. And I immediately thought I want this painting to be torn apart by someone skillful. It is quite rough due to the fact that it's only intended to be viewed in super tiny resolution for 60 by 12, 15 pixels on Steam Store page. Oh, it's like a, a small thumbnail kind of thing. I'm fairly satisfied with it in the tiny resolution. The next step is to ensure that it looks good in any resolution and that's what I need help with. I'd love to get some tips on how to add more elements to the landscape and ensure that they fit into the environment nicely. And don't throw off the focal points by adding too much contrast to unintended places. How do I incorporate the new elements into the environment painting better? Side note, do you have any tips on how to add sharp, bright sunlight to landscapes? Feel free to ignore the character in your paint over lol. And just in case, here's some more art of the same fields. Ah, nice. Very colorful. It's cool how the ground just goes all over like full rainbow. So three points, how to make things look good on bigger resolution, how to add more details to the picture without taking away attention from the focal points, and finally how to add sunlight to the picture. So about the details, one important thing is to not change the global contrast. Meaning if you started the picture with a uh, like certain level of abstraction, like very big scale abstraction, which is what you did because you were planning this for a small image, that means that you need to approach the spots that you already confirmed, approved, to almost not change and to show details within those details. So what I mean by that is like it's hard to come up what exactly a new detail would be. Like say there would be trees in here instead of just this. They should be like if you liked blue color in here of this brightness, you know, that's what the trees should be. You sort of start interpreting your abstraction as something more complex. It should still look kind of the same from the distance, but you just make sense out of it within the same spot, the same color, the same brightness. And you should constantly like zoom out and make sure you keep the contrast the same. Really don't go brighter. Like right now I added a little bit of the shadows, then I'll add a little bit of the bright as well. So overall, the contrast wouldn't increase. You see, it's kind of the same. Maybe even brighter in here, because why not? That's the thing, it's a big distance, so strong shadows are not supposed to be there anyway. And generally, this is an interesting subject. I think I covered it uh, in the um, final quarter of my work on the Outlandish Curiosity book, where I was working from abstractions and thinking about shape design. That's where I was like working on that. So if you are interested, you may check it out because I had a lot of landscapes that had to make sense. But after I was satisfied with the colors and, you know, generally the composition of the Picture. But yeah, overall, of course, you know, that's, um, I implied that you were like really satisfied with the abstraction on the bigger scale, but if you weren't starting with a big scale abstraction, which is you kind of should, overall, just constantly zoom out and it's really, it takes a lot of practice and certain, you know, brain power to keep working this way, but you need to be adding details, thinking about the perspective, the aerial perspective, you know, at which angle things are, thinking about their design, and at the same time thinking if they really support the picture overall or they're breaking it apart. It's a lot of things to keep in mind and it's really hard to, you know, progress in there because if you are keep thinking about the whole picture, you will end up still having just some kind of mush, some kind of not real details going on still. It's really hard to break through that, but you know, it's just, it's that practice where you just need to make sure that it really, really matters to you to make sure that overall the picture just doesn't fall apart. 
So yeah, even someone in the comments, Stephanie Cameron said, like, love this piece. Uh, and it's true, like, the piece looks really cool, and I think it may be one of your best paintings. And it's exactly because you are thinking about it as a small thing. This is a huge deal. <laughs> I remember, like, I kept mentioning, like, my Black Widow painting, it's so bad, I hate it. That's because I thought of it as something huge, and when you start thinking about it that way, you just skip the big abstraction step, you know, where it's important to make the picture looking good like this. And this is looking good like this, you have these spots and contrast very well defined, so it's by definition gonna be a good painting, no matter how exactly it's detailed. It will be catching eyes. And whenever I start a painting that I don't think uh, as something big about, you know, it, it always looks so much better, and even if it ends up being very detailed, I got the good base, so you always need to think about the painting as something small when you begin with it. That's what it means to work on the abstraction level, on the composition, well. That's one key trick to make sure your brain turns on that mode where you really think on the composition. Sunlight. Uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, let's imply that this is generally sunlit already. That's probably a good point. It kind of is, I assume, and you just had a hard time making the lighting really work in that regard, like the shadows and everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the whole thing. I'm gonna hit Control M and I'm gonna darken stuff and remove some of the warmth. Like this, a lot of red, a little bit of green. Let's go even stronger to prove a point. Okay, m more blue, but not as not as dark, probably. <laughs> Something like this. And I'm gonna hit Alt and click on the mask of this blue version of the painting. And now I'm painting around with the no sunlight color of the, the whole thing. Well, kind of. You still need to, you know, think about aerial perspective a little bit and tone it down uh, at the distance. But generally, here I am just adding those shadows. Let's say there's a certain angle of the sun going on, I don't know. But yeah, sunlight overall, it's a complex lighting model. If you really want to introduce all of those shadows and everything, it's a big landscape, which means it will have big amount of details that require all the shading and thinking through where the shadow will fall. But yeah, you can see uh, the main thing that makes the sunlight look like sunlight is pretty much stronger contrast on the shadows. You have those shadows a little bit here and there, it just needs to be stronger. And everywhere, you just define, like, for yourself where the angle of the shadow is, and whenever you want to show anything that's rectified from the ground, that means immediately if something's going up, just add a shadow to the right. And it immediately looks, you know, it's really a language that you can work pretty fast with. One thing I'll do, I'm in the shadow mode, so this is how I'm painting these shadows. I'm gonna choose a dark color, so I'm not doing the strong, like 100% shadow, but a little bit. And this way, that's the thing you were trying to shade the thing already, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is even hills that are tilting away a little bit, they should have this semi-transparent shading where they turn away from the sunlight a little bit. And also, as I said, at a bigger distance, we can introduce the shadow that's just more transparent. And yeah, you can see I'm defining that shadow on absolutely everything. So this side is the bottom side of the dragon. So it's in the shadow and that part is the bright side. I keep it bright. That's the kind of stuff like the contrast is strong enough to be seen even in these situations. So yeah, something like this, I guess uh, that's how I would add it as an, you know, painting over what's already there. But generally, as I said, whenever you define any detail, when you're only building it, just add that shadow from the right or whatever, 
from the left whenever you wanna, wherever you want a sun to be, and you'll see how it's really that language that uh, that works to define things, smaller things in the bigger scale of the sunlit landscape. Um, one thing I would try now is to use another curves on the the rest, like not shadow part, and add some warmth to that. Something like that. Now it, it feels like sun, you know, <laughs> kind of. Now it requires adjustments here as well. If anything, even this main character that you told me to ignore could have the same treatment. I'll even go ahead and cover it up like this. A little adjustment again for the aerial perspective. That's one part where it's a bit hard to add those shadows if you're just doing it in a separate layer. So yeah, there you go. Something like this. Third patient is Stephanie Cameron. Hi, Stephanie. Hey, Boro. First off, I would like to say thank you for all the information and education you've given through your videos over the years. No problem. Glad you found it useful. Back in 2018, I drew the original version of this and around the time I decided to really focus on your videos and apply the lessons uh, to my own art. I then made this version in May 2021. Interesting. It's still one of my favorite pieces, which is why I had to use it for my first overpaint submission. Before I could though, I had to do my own overpaint, as I still saw things to improve on, such as applying the lesson of metal being just reflections from the December's video. I feel like I didn't get the shading on her back right and would love your input on how to make things read as different materials besides by just color choices. Also, I had tried to have a second light source coming from the right, but when I applied it to the skin, I couldn't get the balance right. It felt too overpowering in brightness. Also, the background is supposed to have an effect uh, like you see in photographs where the background becomes a bunch of dots as it blurs out. Boca. Oh, so that's the 2018 version. I thought there was not a lot of difference between these two. So this was your own overpaint for your own uh, artwork right now. And this is the original. This one was a lot cuter and younger. And this one's older and stronger. So let's see about that lighting and materials. Uh, let's work on the lighting. One thing I think you really need here is to just introduce a stronger shadow area to be able to uh, show. Uh, that's the thing you said, the secondary light was overpowering. It's not really that it's a problem, or I mean it is, but you didn't know how to make it not too strong when you wanna see it at all. Well, for that you just needed to lower the contrast of the ambient light in here. So if you tone it down first, I know it looks horrible right now, considering how saturated your shadows were. I'm just working with black right now, I'm working with the brightness. Alright, that almost worked. Automatic subject selection. Something like that, let's just have the character masking working. Yeah, this is a lot easier to work with. I'm going full-blown, like, black shadow, just to have, you know, even layer of color. So I'm gonna try and make a little trick in here. So I, I now have this shape for the shadow. If anything, I should make it like stronger. And inside of the shadow, I will make another one of those tricks where I'll make things like darker. Right now I'm choosing what the color in the shadow will be. I'm gonna go with like a warm shadow. Let's say there's like strong ambience going on. So while there's skylight and everything, it actually makes sense sometimes to choose warm shadows. Some like that, like let's go really strong. Uh, even more red probably, so I'll remove more green for that. And that I'll mask into the shadow shape that I got. And that's the look. I should have probably <laughs> looked at this version when I was changing the color. So I'm thinking like this, you know stronger and we can really play with it now. 
It's not necessary to do all this in separate layers, but this is a good way to learn it, to demonstrate it, see what you like when you are trying things for the first time. So something like this, and then let's introduce the color of that secondary light. So that thing will be also darker than the main light, but not that much. And I will remove some green and a little bit of red. Maybe uh, I will not remove that much of the bright, of the white. But yeah, let's say it's like this. And then I'll mask it out. It's all very complicated, I understand. <laughs> but that's just under the hood manipulations. Right now I'll be painting in that rim lighting color. And I'll be thinking where that will be happening. And this way we can go pretty detailed on that. There we go. We can even make it like a flickering light from some kind of club. <laughs> so there we have it. It's pretty different and all, but the point is, after all these manipulations with the layers and all, what I did was I introduced a stronger shadow from the main light. So I would have a certain space to a space in the brightness to introduce a much darker secondary light that would still look like a light. So, in order to introduce a darker light on the other side, you need to first prepare this other side, really darken it. And it makes sense, it's totally a possible way of lighting in here, because the sun is much brighter than the sky, so if we see details well in the sunlit part, that means the sun unlit part will be noticeably darker. And that's where we can just introduce this extra light. And now it has a nice and striking look. We get this Terminator thing going on and everything, just thanks to the fact that we made the shadow from the main light much darker. Now there's no, you know, uh, questioning about which light is the main one. Obviously this sunlight is much brighter. If anything, we can even go darker in here. It will still remain very much visible and working as intended, you know. So something like this, a bit more dramatic and strong. Also, since we have this uh, strong shadow, as I mentioned in the previous overpaint, it's a good place to introduce skin translucency and other cool rendering effects. Now she kind of looks like an alcoholic, which was not my intention. And yeah, I can control it a little bit. I'm just painting inside of the shadow right now, like I'm masked into the shape of the shadow. That is if you want to repeat all of this voodoo with the layers, which is totally not necessary. So something like that. Now, you also talked about uh, making the concrete look like concrete. I believe this is concrete right here, and this is metal, probably, so... Actually, concrete does look like concrete, I don't know. The thing with concrete, it has very strong roughness, which means... Like, if you have the ball lit by sunlight, and it's concrete, and it's like, I don't know, plastic for instance then the shadow part then the shadow part will have like a certain gradient in here and it will be like fading away in here quite a lot even when if like bumpy and scratchy textury surface the way i'm painting it right now it's still like you know it, there's this gradient it doesn't really look like concrete right now what concrete does is like it has super complex surface so it's always catching a lot of light if it at all has a chance to see it meaning if it's on this half it will be much more like this and you see when i'm making this gradient a lot more sharp like it barely changes a little bit of course it's still like it reacts to the angle so in here there will be a certain darkening going on and still this point right here is the brightest one that's actually looking right at the light but this edge is much stronger and in here we can see all this texture showing through a lot stronger that's why it looks dry and sharp and like you know that texture of concrete it's really showing through on the 
edge of lighting. Like, wouldn't want to scratch your elbow on that. <laughs> so this is the key. Th this gradient is like the main thing. And if we go with metal, of course, we don't see the Terminator at all. That's the whole point of it. Because what metal does, as you pointed out correctly from my videos, it's a reflection, so there will be a highlight in here. But if it's a rough surface, it's a metal that's not polished, but very, very rough, like it's not mirrory at all. It's still only a reflection. Uh, let me even erase all of this and point out that the brightest point is no longer here that's looking right at the light source, but in here where our eye view is reflected towards the light. It's a bit of a different spot. The brightest surface only cares about where the light is, while the brightest reflection highlight is in the middle between where our eyes are and where the light source is. So it's kind of shifting closer to us always. But if it's like a rough metal that's not polished and not having a mirror look, this whole thing becomes very sm smudged out, like it's blurry. And any metal that looks as much as you, like you could swear it's just a surface, it's not reflections, is just a very, very, very blurry, but still reflection, only reflection. And it will never look as, you know, obviously a blurry reflection because it will be, like there will be another light source there, a little light source here, and they all blur out and they create a very complex look, but it's still having that rich metallic gradient thanks to the fact that this is only reflections. And again, even a reflection will absolutely disappear when the surface is completely not seeing that light. You know, we're beyond the horizon here. There's just no way to reflect that light at all. And that's how that thing still happens there, but we won't be seeing this uh, horizon, this terminator here nearly as much. It's pretty much completely absent. The metal has the softest gradient towards the Terminator, so it's just like this. Very soft, deep, and rich looking color. Or not color, like gradient, the values. And as you can see, the brightest point is here, and I'm actually going into darkening closer to the very edge. That's supposed to be the brightest spot on a non-metallic surface. Well, not as strongly, I I'm a bit emphasizing it. it, it still will be pretty bright, but it will be noticeably darker than this brighter spot here. So this is the metallic look now. So yeah, I'll make sure I'll erase the shadow from these metal piercings right here for sure, because they're definitely catching that sunlight, and they'll be almost as bright as the light source, like this is very pure chromatic reflection here. If you're showing this uh, tiny cylinder shape, it should only show up with tiny lines like this, and they won't be like changing a lot along the whole cylinder here. Just tiny lines everywhere. You know, that's immediately making it look a lot more metallic. And what's interesting, even if this wouldn't be um, like a polished metal, and it would be a lot less reflective, it will still have a almost the same look because this is a very tiny curvature like this radius is very tiny so that reflection wouldn't be able to blur out that much it will still look like this tiny line while if it would be made of concrete it would be like almost completely flat lit just darker color it would be kind of just like this and only like the shadow area on the other side being dark why it's kind of hard to grasp on how to make things work well, because it requires a very detailed and careful work with values. So you need to generally be able to very well analyze the geometry, all the angles you have to be certain about them. Hmm, something like that on these parts, let's say it's catching some kind of reflections. Not exactly of the sun, but there's a lot of surfaces that are lit by the sun, so... I want to add a bit more of those in here as well. Yeah, you pretty much nailed your uh, reflections on some parts on these very long cylinders. The only thing is, yeah, uh, the reflection on the ball will be 
probably a lot closer to like a dot. And yeah, a ring is like a cylinder, but it will have a beginning and the end of that reflecting line. So yeah, some reflections like this. Overall, I would definitely tone down the shading uh, that you introduced in here and in here. If we talk about like physically correct material rendering, these like uh, dark lines, very strong values you have going on on the back in here and these wrinkles, but you specifically introduced them in your own overpaint of your latest version. So I think it's like this stylized look, which I actually like. So I won't be like removing them or anything because I think they look really cool. They have, like, I, I for some reason, really like this particular line on the cheekbone. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the look that I think really makes the image a lot stronger due to this strong and confident shadow from the sun, you know? A lot more mysterious or romantic or whatever you want it to be, you know? There's a lot of context that can be introduced with this stronger lighting contrast. The fourth and the final patient of the month is Finrex, formerly Artistic Apricot. Welcome back, Finrex. Hello, Barodante. I'm not looking for any specific feedback this time. Would just love to see what you think and what I could do to improve with my stuff in the future. As per usual, I've attached some whips throughout the process of making this illustration. It's also my first illustration with a full background. I submitted the bird in purple lighting last time. I actually made a background. <laughs> Not sure if you can tell, by the way, but I've actually been doing a lot more work recently than in the past, so I think I've been improving a lot. This is looking very impressive. The strong perspective and the really cool lighting and the leather looking like leather, you know, it's not super detailed, but you definitely see that the reflections are pretty leathery. So this is legit. I can see like this is on our eye level while this is on the floor over there, like legit perspective, really cool looking. Uh, I love this picture. It's definitely very striking and awesome. I would maybe just go around and uh, introduce some stronger shadows because again, this is nighttime situation and I feel like certain areas, this was way off. <laughs> Certain areas definitely deserve to be darker. What kind of brush would fit in the most? Maybe this one? So yeah, uh, the top of the head, I feel like there is no reason for it to be at all that bright. And we have like two lights on the side, that means we'll have this really cool dark line right in the middle of the face. Uh, it's of course important not to overdo it, we don't necessarily want that to be that strong or something, but this is that lighting situation where that will happen, so really cool. I, I like this picture a lot, very strong, like really a product of consistent practicing and seeing how like your brain can really work on the character, on the lighting and on the perspective all at the same time. So there's certain confidence because of that. That's really that zone showing through. Uh, I'm not sure about this lighting right here. I feel like the legs pretty much just go down. So probably a bit more like this. On this leather here, it's probably mostly gonna be reflections, not really lighting. It's not metallic reflection, but it's black leather, so mostly just reflections. Yeah, more of these wrinkles. Uh, that's the thing, on the leather, since uh, it's black, so we don't really see lighting, we just see reflections. That means when the wrinkles happen, you know, they go like this and only these bits will be actually reflecting the highlight. Everything is dark, so we have pretty strong lines over each wrinkle like this. It's really, that's how it looks so shiny and awesome. Yeah, you can really go really strong. And these wrinkles, they never stop and they, like the reflectivity and the shine only increases the effect. And I'll go darker in there since it's, you know, it's bright and all, but it's black. Black and uh, glossy, like it's not rough. So it's just all the brightness is concentrated on the highlight part and the rest will be getting dark really fast. 
some like this in here. And yeah, we can just keep on going with shading the hair darker. Like surely it's a little bit translucent, but I, I it's not the situation. Like this is not sunlight. It's not gonna be showing through in this situation. I feel like even the picture generally will benefit a lot more, not from the translucency affected shading, but from the strong contrast. This is the kind of character here. A lot of badassery I'm feeling with this one. And yeah, of course, the tail really asking to get much darker. So something like that. Yeah, I really feel like this extra contrast is totally fitting for this situation here. One thing, uh, like it's almost nothing and maybe it will even make the whole thing look a bit worse, but I feel like there should be a soft shadow on the wall from the guy, kind of like this, but now I'll have to waste a lot of time erasing it again. All right, let's see. There you go. Something like this, and why I said it may only make things worse actually is because we have like a stronger silhouette of the character this way, and this way is kind of getting a bit muddier. So just a little bit maybe, like this. So there you go, really cool. I think this extra contrast in here is just making it even more awesome. So yeah, that'll be it for this three-part saga of Overpaint for January of 2022. Uh, thank you guys so much for your submissions. There was a whole lot this time, and it was a whole lot of fun working on all of this stuff. If any of you guys want me to overpaint your picture like this, the link to my Patreon page is in the end of this video. You become my patron in the overpaint tier, then submit the picture with a message. I read the message and overpaint the picture. But for now, this is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully in a better world than it is today. Bye. Well, this was fun. Felt like home.